Hey gang, so you, you might be wondering, why are we back at the college again? Well, <clears throat> there's a simple answer. Um, we almost completed our task for the, t the college, which is retrieving those books. But what I didn't realize at the time, uh, we were quintessentially, although we were able to successfully, albeit painfully, get through the, the, uh, the Fel Glow Keep, where these mages, that, that the mage that stole the books from, had joined... And we were able, although he died in the, and while I was trying to rescue him in the books, he, he died in the process. Uh, we found the chamber with the books, but there, were, and we pretty much killed all the mages in Fel Glow uh, Keep. But there was uh, one, like, head mage, evil head mage. And I didn't realize at the time, but that was basically our second boss fight in the game. So, our first boss fight was the uh, spider and the barrow in the beginning. And, uh, yeah, so we were not prepared, and we did okay, but, like, we were getting our butts kicked. And so, I, I basically loaded back to the point before we entered the chamber where the head mage was, the head evil mage, and I just decided to go back into town, saw all of our equipment that, that we looted, and then go back to the college and try to learn something, because right now we are, like, we, we sucked. Like, we, we basically got our, got our butts kicked. And I think part of it, upon retro reflection, was that we didn't have conjuration, where she had conjuration. I noticed that the guy that we rescued, unfortunately, died. He was very useful while he was alive because he had a conjuration spell that allowed him to um, summon things. So, I've kind of figured out who the conjuration guy was. And I feel bad because we kind of snubbed him earlier. Like, we were leaving the college, he was like, I've been working on my research. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we got stuff to do. So we're going to go back to him. I forget if he's in the Hall of Attainment or the Hall of uh, Countenance. I think he's actually... I think he's actually in the, in the Hall of, count, of uh, Attainment. Let's make sure. Yep. Do, do, do. And we're gonna bug him a bit and see if he knows anything. Uh, where is he? At least I think he was in the hall of attainment. Need your help something mm, No, this is not I what I was know. thinking. Alright. Let's go back. We'll find him. Look, it's uh some uh tusk candles. Bring it horn candles. Maybe a dragon's teeth. Who knows? you buddy this him yeah this is our guy okay we're gonna be like before we're gonna be super creepy and just uh, uh be like staring there at him while he's sleeping places where one can pursue my type of work without fear of persecution oh hello there what have you got for sale so you wish to master the arcane arts Forsooth, barely, barely, yes. Okay, what does he have that we don't have? Okay, so this guy, he kind of advised us, like I, I spoke to him earlier, and he kind of advised us to kind of not to engage in conjuring on the college grounds. I noticed that in the beginning, as a, by choosing the mage class, we got some default spells that were really cool. I noticed we didn't have any conjuring spells. I think the reason is it's kind of a taboo thing. Which I kind of seeing why, because it gives you a serious edge in battle. So we're definitely gonna get into conjuration. He did say 
and particularly necromancy. So I guess conjuration weirdly crosses with necromancy in that I, I wouldn't consider necromancy conjuration because you're not really conjuring up a zombie. In this case, I think you are, but like, I don't really classify it. I classify them as two separate things. It's tight, like, uh, necromancy is taking something that's already there and then altering it, like making it from undead to alive undead, where conjuration is just pulling something out of your butt, just making something appear in thin air. And so I think both are, are frowned upon, but I, like, half those mages that were practicing those, like, the, the evil mages, like, knew, like, summoning spells and were, like, kicking my butt with, like, before I even got to them. They'd, like, summon familiars and, um, Enterot Nox, which are, like, flame demons and, like, all kinds of stuff to attack me. So I, I, I vote, you know, like, I don't want to taint our soul too much, but, like, I feel like we're getting behind in, in our magic learning. So we're going to taint our souls just a little bit, just a tiny bit. You know, hopefully it won't twist us into, like, uh, um, an evil wizard, but, you know, it, it's, it's going to give us that edge that we need to do, at least to hopefully defeat the boss there. So, yeah, we should have saved our gold. We, we invested in all that destructive magic, and that's and I quickly learned the hard way that that's not where it's at. I mean, destructive magic's cool, and they were also using destructive magic, but if you combine that with conjuring, so you're, like, torching them with, like, fire bolts while you're, like, a flame antirock is there, we're definitely getting the flame antirock spell. And the f I noticed a lot of them had familiars. I vote... And I think Soul Trap is good for, for later in regards to it. We can augment. We have all these soul gems and we'll have to dabble in learning how to augment our weapons with soul gems. Yeah, there's a lot to this game, and, and I'm a very casual player, so, you know, and during this playthrough I'm going to try to more seriously, like, I'm not a hardcore gamer, so I don't really care about, like, getting the best score or having a perfect run or anything. I'm more, like, story-driven, but, like, we will try to, I'll try to do my best in regards to learning some of these things that are just really integral To, um, to the game as far as like dual casting and uh, um, soul binding like I just I think this game is cool and I got into alchemy quite a bit I think alchemy is really cool and really gives you an edge yikes I'm gonna have to help the town guard out there. I don't think he's got it. I'm gonna make a citizen's arrest here. Oh man. Oh no no no. Hurry. Yeah, so. Looks like there are some vampires and death hounds running amok, which death hounds are like subservient to vampires. So I hope that <laughs> I didn't add to the problem by freeing all those vampires back at that place. So I'm definitely intrigued to see. I know there's a whole storyline with vampires in this game. Right now we're trying to just stay on task and get, get this done here. So we're going to go back and we're going to try to take do the boss fight and try our new summoning skills. Ay, 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 ay. Saving every five minutes. But yeah, I, I we did unleash some vampires and that's kind of an example of bad vampires are the ones that were attacking that town. So it's kind of like the enemy of my enemy is my friend in that case. So the vampires did clear out some of these mages for me, but... Some of them might have gotten the outside and might have caused more trouble than, that, than than it was worth. So, who knows? We'll find out. We'll find out the hard way later, I'm sure. So, yeah, let's just... Let's take a look. 
do some book learning here. I don't want to taint her souls yet. But, so I'm not going to dabble in ne direct necromancy with this conjuring stuff. Like, you know, it's like, it's like, it, it's kind of like uh, entry level steroids at the gym. It's like, well, I'm not doing the, <laughs> I'm not doing the Olympics and, you know, <laughs> no. It just, yeah, don't take steroids. Steroids are bad. But, um, yeah, it's just like, uh, it's not like, ste okay, I'll put it this way. It's not like steroids. It's like taking, like, whey powder. Like, the conjuring's like the, like, the, the acceptable, like, well, you're kind of cheating, but you're, you're taking the whey protein with the, uh, um, you know, they give you a little bit of an edge, but, like, it's not like the steroids, like, like, necromancy's like the steroids, like, oh, you're not supposed to do that, so. Alright, let's take a look here. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about here. Let's see how much it costs, if we can even do it. Might not even have a high enough level. Well, maybe we're not in a good area to do it. Yeah! Check that out, gang. Yeah. So that's going to give me a little bit of an edge here. some books. it was worth it. Hopefully, hopefully it was worth it. I like how she's just waiting patiently for us. She hasn't left the room. Those books must be really engrossing. She was there she's like, man, why is everybody dead around here? Okay. Okay, game. This may be my flame Anthrax can mess with her flame. Barged into my home and laid waste to my project. How nice to meet you. Let's just see, because that was a harsh. I'm here so for the books of the college. Blackies. That's disappointing. You show real promise. You come here, kill my assistants, disrupt my work. You've annoyed me, so I don't think I'll be giving you anything. going anywhere without those books or what yeah let's just see if he can be super nice perhaps can come to arrangement i have a feeling there's no 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 options but now you can go back to your college and leave me be or i can kill you your choice yeah she's gonna attack us anyway oh now we're all pleased and thank you are we i'm afraid we're well beyond pleasantries I'll allow you the opportunity to turn around, walk out that door, and never come back. I suggest you move quickly. Yeah. Are you attempting to threaten me after I've been so hospitable? Well, then you won't be leaving here at all. So you know the locations of the three books. Okay, so hopefully... Yeah, right off the bat. You know what we forgot to do, gang? Before we even do this, just to save us grief, just to save us pain. No. Good thing we save a lot. Let's go way back here. And I apologize, you know, it's bad form. I haven't played a, um, this style of RPG in a while or Skyrim. Or 
in Diablo or any of these RPGs where you just kind of know you should know better. But we're gonna go get some uh, get some potions. We're gonna get some potions because yeah, like a lot of potions. Because even with our enhanced spell power, we still are getting our butts kicked. I want all your potions. Rather pale. Ah, so you're an alchemist then. Yay, barely. Are we out of gold? We're already out of gold. Yikes, potions are expensive. Okay. Alchemy lab. Store health. I offer remedies for it. It's both common and clear. Do what you know about it. Your service. Let's do a little taste test and see if we can, uh, once we figure out how to make our own, it's going to help us a lot. Consuming all this stuff. Damn, a tummy ache. We're not eating the nerve root. Man, we had two. <laughs> Pain of knowledge. Yeah, it doesn't look like you discovered anything. You'll find tonics, salves, poultices, and potions on their shelves. Perhaps do your work. Bellathor. How about health Some potions? They call this junk. Me, I call them treasures. One, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Okay, what do you got, man? You got some potions for us? Yikes. Everything's expensivo. Do you have anything? Yeah, here we go. Where did we get dog meat from? Loot. Yeah, we picked up loot. It's pretty cool. Now, let's keep these soul gems just in case for later. Because I think we can infuse soul gems and get stuff. Potions. Do come back. I don't like the guy talks to me. Kind of weird. Do come back. Thank you. Stuff is expensive. Mm -hmm. 
Farewell. How many potions do we have? Yeah, we need to learn alchemy, guys. We gotta take an episode and just, just buckle down and get some alchemy behind us. Let me know in the comments if you if you like um, to see me develop skills and stuff, or if you prefer that I just, how do you say, play the game just during the key parts of the game, not the like day-to-day -day, like blacksmithing and uh, uh, alchemy creation and whatnot. But it would be an interesting learning experience. So, and, and maybe you guys could help me out as far as you know, get let me know in the comments if you know any any combos that are good for alchemy or like different uh, um, tips and tricks to get good at uh, get best at my craft at being a, a mage. All right, gang. Uh, where were we? Where's yes? Let's. Let's go. That's a pretty baller looking shield. That's a uh, Daedric, my I believe. Yeah, we'll have to get into Daedric lore in here. I say um, I'll have to. I know I began listening a while ago because I do do really like uh, uh, Skyrim a lot. To uh, um, there's a YouTube channel and a podcast called Fudge Muppet, and they it's a weird name, but they do like super in depth like. Elder Scroll lore, and it is like um, on J.R. Tolkien's like level lore, like the lore of like it's like the Cimmerillion, like delving into the Cimmerillion, and I like this game, and I know a bit about the lore, but I, I just don't have the time to like read every book in the game, and, and you know, just figure everything out and, and read every online post about it, and so just kind of Listening to the Fudge Muppet, I thought, like, kind of enlightened me a little bit in regards to, like, the lore of the, uh, of, Sky of Skyrim and the lore of, uh, Oblivion. Well, just general Elder Scrolls lore. So they kind of cover everything. Am I going the right direction? Oh, how did I miss this book? Yeah, well, that was handy. <laughs> Go words and onwards. Okay, no, what my mouse is goofy. I might have to get a new mouse soon. Thank you for watching the budget channel with uh, Donald Plays. All right, let's take a look here. Let's save. And round two. So you're the one. How nice to meet you. I'm here for the books so of God. You come here, kill my assistants. I'm not going anywhere. Are you attempting to threaten me? Yes. After I've been well, then you won't be leaving here at ha. all. Ha, we'll see. Get the plane man truck somewhere off the bat. And let's go ahead and get this one. That's not what I wanted to do. Oh my word, guys. That's just insane. It's like an insane, like. So you're the one. I like Sky I like Skyrim. So you're just you come here, kill my assistant. Are you attempting? Well, then you won't be leaving. You're at all.
Here we go. Oh my gosh. Enough. Yeah, she doesn't give you like three seconds to like plan anything. Was, that was bonkers. Okay. <laughs> he knocked the book down even. Okay. That was nuts. She was like right in my grill, like not giving me like 10 seconds to respond to anything. And then she also summoned the Flame Antrak to hit me while she was fighting me. Like, that's pretty... Pretty... Pretty tough for, like, a... I think this is our second quest for the Mage Guild. First quest was the Excavation Site. So I guess needless to say, we have much to learn. I'll have to work on my ward so I'll be able to block a spell and then cast a spell. If I'm gonna fight more mages. To work on my dual casting. <sighs> Jeez Louise. Very stoic. Say, uh, the Altimer, right? The, no, not the Altimer. The Dwarf Race? Where the Dwarf Race? The, uh, The Bosmer are the Wood Elves, the Altmer are the High Wood Elves. Um, the Drow are the Dark Elves. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and skedaddle back to the college. Go to the Arcanium. Deliver our books to the Orc Librarian. Uh, 
And before he talks to them, just for the sake of the lore of the game, let's go ahead and take a gander at the books. One was Night of Tears. One's the last king of the Aelids. It's the first whole revolt one, last king of the Aelids. The Last King of the Aelids by Herminia Siana. Weird. It's not letting us turn the... Okay. The Aelids are Heartland, High Elves, ruled, ruled Cyrodiil in long ages of myth before the beginning of recorded history. One of the earliest recorded dates, in fact, is the fall of White Gold Tower in era 243, which is commonly assumed to mark the end of the Aelids. Though the Aelid ruled over all of Cyrodiil, it was indeed broken in era 243. This is only one of the most obvious stages near the end of a long decline. The first two centuries of the first era saw increasing strife between the great Aelid lords of Cyrodiil. Alyssa appears to have taken advantage of the period of civil war to launch her uprising. Imperial historians have traditionally attributed her to the her victory to the intervention from Skyrim. It also appears that she had at least as much help from the rebel Aelid fortresses during the seizure of the White Gold Tower. The popular image of the Aelids as a brutal slave masters is based in fact. Of course, it's less well known that a number of the Aelid princes continued to rule parts of Cyrodiil after 263 as vassals of the new empress of Cyrodiil. This suggests that neither Aelid rule was not universally de detested, or that Alyssa and her successors were not more pragmatic than is traditionally believed, or perhaps some of both. In any event, the excavations at a number of Aelid sites show continued occupation and even expansion during the so-called late Aelid period. Air 243 to 498. I'm not really familiar. I don't, I'm just assuming era. It says 1E to see, so I'm not sure how they're categorizing things. At first, many Aelid lords continued to rule as vassals of the new human regime. In some cases, Aelid supporters of Alicia were eventually rewarded with new lands taken from slain enemies. It is not clear to what extent human slavery continued under the Cyrodiilic Cyr Empire. Humans have continued to dwell in Aelid, ruled areas in, of Cyrodiil, but there is nothing definitive to show under what terms. This is an, an easy relationship from the beginning, and was not destined to last long. Resentment and the continued presence of the Aelid nobles within the Empire was a contributing factor to the rise of the so-called Elysian Order, founded by Marcuk. The first victims of the Elysians were the Aelids of Cyrodiil. In the early 300s, the surviving Aelid communities and human-ruled areas were obliterated, obliterated one by one, the refugees temporarily swelling the power of the weird and for some reason my mouse is giving me trouble of the remaining Aelid lordships then in 361 the Elysians gained control of the empire enforced the Elysian doctrines throughout the domain. The Aelid lordships were abolished. Enforcement of this decree does not appear to require much direct violence. It seems that at this point the balance of power is so overwhelmingly against them, their fate so long foreshadowed, that most of the remaining Aelids simply left Cyrodiil, eventually being absorbed into elven populations of Valenwood and High Rock. Indeed, the rise of the journey hegemony may be linked to the exodus of the Aelids from Cyrodiil, a connection so far studied by historians. Still, a remnant of Aelid populations seems to have survived the Elysians because we hear the last king of Aelids joining the Battle of Lanumbra Moors, where the Durenus sightfully defeated the Elysians in 482. 
how this king's people survived the preceding century is unknown. We do not even know who they were. Recent research points to Nalada as a possible resting place of this last king. Unfortunately, in the current state of the empire, funds are no longer available for profit to proper scientific investigation of such extensive ruins. So to answer these questions, will have to be left to, to future generations. Right, I think that's everything in the, the last king of the Aelids. Um, the other one... was the Night of Tears. So that was more of a historical account of uh, the, the Aelids. Sarthal holds a prominent place in Skyrim history. Even Sarthal, I think, is a town. Even if most do not remember it by its name, it is, of course, the site of one of the first major Nord settlements. One of the first cities of men in Skyrim and the earliest known capital of their civilization. It is also the site of terrible bloodshed where the elves attempted to drive the Nords out of Skyrim to succeed only by incurring their wrath in the form of Dizgramor and his fabled 500 companions who swept the elves from Skyrim and firmish, firmly established it as the home of the Nords. All this is known, but little else. What happened is that the Night of Tears, when Sarthal <coughs> was raged to the ground, what provoked the elves to such a deliberate, vicious attack? What prompted such a severe response from the Nords? Inglamo's treatise on the Altamer antecedent suggests that the elves of Merithic era, along with their counterparts in the early Dwemer, possessed a degree of sophistication unparalleled in Tamriel. They displayed power beyond what could be expected at the time. While a distinct explanation is not given for this, I believe this is where compared to the early writings of the Hesef Shurinus suggests that there's something greater was at work that night in Sarthal. The true motives behind the Night of Tears have been obscured to us by the passage of time, but I believe this is not a simple war of territory out of control of Skyrim. It was having a significant event based around something very particular. The Nords found something when they built their city buried deep in the ground. They attempted to keep it buried, but the elves learned of it and coveted it for themselves. Thus they assaulted Sarthal. Their goal is not to drive the Nords out, but to secure this power for themselves. I believe Ysgrimor knew something what the elves would find under Sarthal and rallied together to keep the elves from gaining it. When the Nords once again controlled Skyrim, this power was buried deep below the earth and sealed away. Time has kept this knowledge from us, but it is my hope that time will also reveal the truth behind these, uh, these words. Every effort will be made to relocate Sarthal and find what has been lost to us. Interesting. And I'm just going to make sure I get the right book. Those are the two of the right books, and there's one more book. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look-see here. See if we can find Skyrim missing books. Hold quest. Yeah, forget it says it's the third quest they went on, but I just remember one other quest. I don't remember any other quests. In the books, quest available. Da, 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 da. Night of Tears, Last of the Aelids, Fragment on Ar Fragment on Arterium. Yeah, it's good to look it up. Let's just take a look and see. Yeah. Real quick, let's see what the the Aelids. The 
Elides. Yeah, the High Elves, the Heartland Elves, or the Wild, the Wild Elves, or Race of Elves. Yeah, so apparently, like way back in the day before humans had started to dominate the land, Elves were more in charge. So the High Elves, which, which we're playing a High Elf, that were were um, also called the Elids. Um, and the, at least I think it might be a faction of elves, including high elves, but it's at least high elves. And that's what they were referring to in those books that we were reading, that the Aelids had found something under Sarthal. And the gal that we attacked is also uh, a high elf. They're just so weird because there's all these... So Somerset Isle is where the high elves live currently, but they had invaded Skyrim and Cyrodiil, were driven out by humans, were driven out by the Imperial Emperor, Empire which are now invading us in uh, Cyrodiil. And they were driven out by the Nords, which are uh, the dominant race in Skyrim. But the High Elves apparently back in the day found something in Sarthal, which is a city, and it piqued the interest of, uh, of this, uh, this um, Aelid, you know, Thalmor, High Elf, uh, chick. I don't know if she's part of the uh, the um, Aldmir Empire or not, but okay, so Fragment on Arturum. I'm guessing the fragment was what was in Sarthal that the Nords are so worried about the High Elves delving, so it probably has some great a great source of ancient power. Like these books, ancient. Gonna lose. <laughs> Just boring you guys to death. The Isle of Arcanium. Arteum. The Isle of Arteum is the third largest island on the Somerset Archipelago, which is where the High Elves live. Located in the south of Morodon Village, in the Potsana and west of the mainland, village of Runisabe, is best known for being home to the Sigic Order. Okay, finally, something we read that makes sense. Uh, perhaps the oldest monist, monistic group in Tamriel. So that's that now I'm seeing. Because the other two books, I'm like, how does this relate to the orb? We're just, like, really dry history. and Like, what does it, what does it have to do with anything, you know? The earliest written record of the Sidgix is from the 20th year to the first era and then tells the tale of the renowned Breton sage and author, and Breton's another human faction, born at traveling the Isle of Arcanum to meet with the but chiefest threat master of the Sidgix. Even then, the Sidgix were counselors of kings and proponents of the Elder Way, taught to them by the original race that inhabited Tamriel. The Elder Way is a philosophy of meditation, and the study said to bind the forces of nature to the individual will. It differs from Magicka and Orja, but the effects are much the same. That said, it is perhaps more than a coincidence that the Isle of Artinian literally vanished from the shores of Somerset. So they vanished the island of magic or something? In the second era, at about the time of the founding of the Mages of Guild and Tamriel. Various historic Tamriel is just the whole, like everything, is, is what I believe, what I think. I'd have to make certain, but I think it's like all the regions. is collectively called Tamriel. So Skyrim, Cyrodiil, Somerset, everywhere. It's like the states in the U.S., Various histories and, and scholars, the United States of America, and then each of the states. Uh, various histories and scholars have published theories about this, but perhaps none but Lachesis and his number could shed a light on the matter. 500 years pass, and the Artem returned. The Sidgicks were on the Isle consisted of persons, mostly elves who had disappeared and presumed dead in the second era. They could not or would not offer any explanation for Artaeum's whereabouts during that time or the fate of Lachesis and the original council of Artaeum. Currently, the Sidgicks are led by the Lord Master Solaris, who has presided over the council of Artaeum for the last 250 years. The council influence of Tamarillian politics is titled. The kings of Somerset, particularly those in Moradon, have often sought the Sidgicks' opinion. Emperor Uriel V was influenced by the council in the early, most glorious parts of his reign before his disastrous attack on a Kavir. It has even been suggested that the fleet of King Orgham of the was destroyed by joint effort by the NKS and the Sigic Order. Last four. So they're super important. The Isle of Artem was difficult to chart geographically. It was said all shifts continuously at either random or by decree of the council. 
visitors to the island are so rare as to be unheard of. Anyone with a desire of meeting with us, Sijik may find contacts. So they're really hard to get a hold of. But they apparently talk to us psychically, so we're important. And they have good connection with the Orb. So, orchards and pastures and lagoons. Natural surroundings, the Sephora Tower in particular, I would study for it's a relic from the civilization that predates the High Elves by several hundred years and was still used in certain rites with Sidgicks. Perhaps one day it might return. Death is apparently in the Isle of Tam by gracious consent. Yeah, so I don't see what we're like, maybe in conjunction, we give them to them in, in like conjunction with other books, it's going to make sense. But they have no mention of some orb. It looks like they kind of mention some sort of relic, maybe, but not really. And they only wrap out of the three books. What are you doing that for? They talk about the High Elves seeking something under Sarthal, which I'm guessing is the orb. And then, you know, the Sigic Order, like, existing, although they don't mention any connection with that with an orb. Yeah, so... I don't want to see you treating any of these books poorly. Yeah, yeah. Well, well. And you seem to be in one piece. Almost not. <laughs> and inform Mirabelle if I find anything relevant. Night of Tears, eh? I remember this one. Riveting. Though, Riveting book. that interesting? Did you read it yourself? If I recall it correctly, that has some interesting implications. You should mention that to Told Deer. I read it and it was pretty dry. I suppose you've earned these. Yeah, it's a good thing we read it though, because then they removed the book so that we we uh, don't say, guys, that I didn't try to in, you know inculcate you in with the lore of uh, um, of, of Skyrim and of, of Tamriel. Try to get you into the get you immersed in the atmosphere and and whatnot. So, let's go ahead and end it there, and we're going to report this to the mage, and we'll, I'm guessing we'll start our next quest. But uh, I think we're, we're well on our way to discovering the origins of the strange orb that we've recovered for the college. We'll find out because that one guy, our, the, the Archmage's advisor, I forget how you pronounce his name, Arkham or something, he is also a high elf, and he has, and he has links to the Thalmor, which are a radical faction of the... Altamir, the High Elves, used to be known as the Aelids, that uh, um, he has a he has a, a very unhealthy interest in the orb. So he's uh, just for reference, he's this guy over here, or he, yeah, just no, that's actually Tolfer. Keeping careful watch, yeah, he's usually out here by the orb. So. At any rate, I think I think at least we have some leads. So we'll go ahead and leave it there, and we'll thank you guys for joining my stream. If you guys uh, like uh, my video, please give it a like. Uh, let me know if you like these uh, going into the lore of the game, or if that if you find it boring, or if you find it interesting and enhances it. Um, let me know if I'm doing a good job, uh, and then just uh, yeah, go ahead and hit the like bucket button, and I'd be very appreciative. And uh, um, if you have any friends that like RPGs, uh, tell them to subscribe. Um, right, I'll see you guys again soon.